Younger men that are still considering having children really need to consider what is the best approach for their prostate cancer. In particular, what we do is we look at men and one of the first things we say, especially younger men, is are you interested in having more children? It's a particularly important uh, question that we ask them because if men are interested in having more children, when we take the prostate out and the seminal vesicles, and again, we do a vasectomy at the same time, that man is not going to able to ejaculate with normal fluid that is going to be able to impregnate his wife or significant other who that's going to be. And the reason why, again, is because we've basically done a vasectomy in the same setting. So that's important to know. So a lot of younger men, a lot of it depends on their grade of their cancer and the aggressiveness of their cancer and the extent of their cancer. We can actually follow them pretty closely, and I've done this on, on, on several men in my practice, where men have had low or sometimes intermediate grade prostate cancer where we said, look, you know, start working on it now. Start working on trying to have children, and at some point in the near future, we're gonna consider you know, proceeding forth and doing your prostatectomy or radiation, whatever it's gonna be. Most of these men, because they're younger men, have elected to go ahead and have surgery at that point, but it's important to know that. There are other men, however, that say, look, I want to get this thing done, what do I do? And then for those men, what we do is we actually bank their sperm and cryopreserve their sperm. So if and when they are ready to actually go ahead and have children, then we consider in vitro fertilization because we've already stored that sperm afterwards. Let's say for some reason a man doesn't do that and then says, well, I've had, a, I've had a prostatectomy, but now I'm at the love of my life and now I want to really have children. At that point, we can actually still harvest sperm, whether it's actually going to be from the testicles or you know, sometimes you can actually get it from the vas deferens, but primarily you would do you know, testicular sperm extraction is what we call it and actually get the sperm from there. So there are still options for those men, but routinely it's, a, it's not the regular, you know, let's go home and, and you know, put on the berry white and try to have sex and see if we can kind of make this happen because you know we've got to look at the physiology of how a man has to ejaculate to get that sperm out. Some prostate cancers are high risk, aggressive, and more likely to spread. Others are low risk, least likely to have bad outcomes. The biopsy says cancer, but current diagnostic tools provide limited information about how aggressive a man's individual disease is. So most men decide to treat prostate cancer immediately. Once treated, many men experience serious long-term side effects, like incontinence and sexual impotence. Immediate treatment isn't always needed, but right now a man can't be sure if his cancer is the kind that is likely to require treatment or if he's okay to wait for now. What if there was a test that could determine how aggressive prostate cancer is? Genomic Health is developing a new test to do just that. By reviewing the underlying biology of the tumor and using genes from multiple biologic pathways, the test can predict the aggressiveness of prostate cancer when diagnosed, allowing a man to make a more informed treatment decision with confidence taking care of himself with more information and greater peace of mind.